Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at a piece of malware called Edelkuz. Now Edelkuz is a really interesting sample because it's a crypto miner. And crypto miners are designed to sit on your machine and perform computationally hard problems in order to mine a cryptocurrency on behalf of the bad guys that put the malware there. So they're generating money from the resources being used on your machine. Uh, and uh, along the way, you probably find that your machine will be uh, relatively unusable as well. Um, what's interesting about this sample is the way in which it's being propagated in the wild. Now it's being propagated via the same uh, or very similar mechanism to the way in which the WannaCry ransomware was being distributed in, uh, in, over the last couple of weeks, uh, which was by utilizing this SMB exploit, which has been uh, exposed, in the wild for, for, exposed in the wild for a couple of weeks now, uh, which is being dubbed Eternal Blue because of the tool in which um, the NSA allegedly have used to exploit this particular vulnerability in the wild. Um, so this SMB vulnerability is how this, uh, how this malware is being propagated and, and effectively becoming onto, uh, onto victims' machines, and then it'll also look to then self-propagate out through the same mechanisms as well. Um, so we're going to take a look here today at the sample. Uh, we're going to run it and we'll have a look at, uh, from a process perspective, uh, how the malware interacts with the, with, the, with the file systems and what it's up to. And we'll also look from a network point of view as well, to, so you can see the network indicators you can gather from this, this, this type of malware as well. So this is the, uh, the sample. We got it straight from VT. Uh, you can see as well, it was uh, the first submission was just over a week ago and it was lasting a couple of days ago and it's got pretty good detection rates as well. So I'm going to stick this on my Windows 10 VM which is here uh, and because we're, we're performing behavioral analysis on this particular sample today we need some behavioral tools to, to monitor what's going on on the machine so the first one I always like to run is process hacker and you can see I've got that on my screen at the moment and that's just going to monitor any processes which come alive and we can uh, pause them if we want to and we can poke around them if we if we see if we see fit as well so uh, because we're looking at um, a behavioral standpoint we want to look at the network activity I'm going to run Wireshark so let me just uh, activate Wireshark and that's going to tick away in the background and we can come back to that and apply some filters and, and have a look at the network indicators. But I know that Wireshark is now running on my machine. Uh, and then the next thing I want to look at and is that from a process perspective, what is um, the malware doing and how is it interacting with um, the, the operating system? And Procmon or Process Monitor from SysInternals is fantastic for, for giving us a, a, an auditable record of exactly what's going on from a, a registry, from a file system perspective, etc. Uh, and we can use, again, some filters built into, uh, in, into this particular tool in order to, to get a real, a real good view and a real good feel for what, the, what this particular malware is up to. So that's good. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, execute the malware, uh, and then we can see uh, see exactly what goes on under the hood, and we can then uh, kind of poke around it. So let me just uh, run it as administrator, because those are the privileges it would be given if it was delivered via uh, an SMB exploit. And we can see straight away we've got loads of pop-ups on my screen, uh, loads of stuff which is going on, uh, loads of command windows, uh, which seem to be opening and closing really quickly. And we can see a couple of processes here, which uh, have been highlighted by Process Hacker uh, as being spawned. So something funky is definitely going on here uh, that we want to take a note of. Um, so let's take a look from a process side of things and see just what happened to all of those windows. We obviously didn't uh, have time to kind of catch the processes and pause them and, uh, and, and poke around and see what exactly they were doing. So what we can actually do is we can press comp Command and L in our Procmon window and we can have a look and see from an operation perspective and we'll set that to where process is, is set that to process create and we'll, uh, we'll add that to our filter. And actually what we'll do is just press Control and E just to stop any further uh, logging which might uh, consume any particular resource. So we can see here, if we scroll to the top, we can see ex the Explorer process was uh, the process which launched uh, the Adelclus binary. Well, that's exactly right because I double clicked it and I was in uh, an Explorer context. And we can see Adelclus then fired off um, all of these sub-processes here uh, in turn. So we've got command.exe um, and we can see here the command line invocation. Um, so the commands that were passed to command.exe the time that this malware is executing and we can see the first thing it does is it uh, kills the task called uh, HD manager if it exists it also kills mmc.exe and it also looks here uh, to stop a service called WELM and then subsequently deletes that service and then we can see straight away here also adds in some starts to add in some firewall rules as well so we can see net sh ipsec static add a new policy uh, and we can see here this uh, some, if we if we scroll down uh, a little bit this is super interesting we can see a rule here which blocks the um, the destination port of 445 um, so that's super interesting because this is the the open door in which the malware came through um, to infect my system it came through SNB which is port 445 and now this malware 
malware is closing that door behind it. It's blocking any further access to port 445. Um, and that's super interesting because um, that, that means that no other malware can, can effectively take control of, um, of, of this machine. Uh, and this malware has now got effectively control over uh, what was once a vulnerable system. And it's probably done you a favor in, in a certain respect as you're not gonna get any additional malware via the same delivery method. Now, the reason why it's done that is because if we remember, this is a crypto mining piece of malware. And the idea of a crypto miner is it consumes as many resources as it can on your machine in order to perform these computationally hard problems, uh, which will earn the bad guys more and more money. And if another piece of malware came along and started infecting your machine and started using some of that precious resource that the bad guys have uh, have, uh, have kind of exploited already, then that's no good for them. So they actually close that door behind them on the way in by blocking port 445, so super interesting. And actually what's been discussed in the wild, believe it or not, is that this particular piece of malware could have actually um, stopped uh, the spread of uh, the WannaCry virus as well, because in fact, it's close the more and more uh, machines that this particular um, malware variant is infecting, the less chance it, the other pieces of malware, such as WannaCry, etc., can also infect. So an interesting point there. So we can see the firewall rules and some other stuff going on here. We can see some other tasks being killed as well and some other services uh, being killed. Um, and then also, uh, some again, some more firewall rules, etc. And we can see uh, the start of uh, what looks to be um, some, some file system activity as well. So we can see here that C Windows temp, there's an EXE file which uh, seems to have been created and launched under a separate process. So this wuauser.exe, which lives bizarrely in the fonts directory. Not many things get written to the fonts directory, so we might want to take a look at that uh, in just a second. So this is a really cool way of you, you being able to kind of timestamp and view um, in, in, in a nice easy way, a nice easy flow, um, what a process is doing and how uh, the subprocesses are then interacting with the file system as well. Uh, we can see as well that uh, another another um, process is being launched off the back of it, uh, which again, it looks like it's launched a bat file and there's a ping to localhost as well. Perhaps that's some kind of sleep technique it's using. So that's interesting. So we're going to minimize that for just one second and we're going to have a look at our network side of things and we'll see from a network perspective just what's going on. So what we're interested in is HTTP traffic. So we'll filter out on HTTP and we'll see if we've got anything going on here. And we can see, yeah, we've got some GET requests and we've got some other stuff as well, which looks a bit um, the continuation of traffic. Uh, but let's try and filter this out a little bit more and we'll do HTTP request uh, dot method equals, oops, equals GET um, and not UDP. Um, if I can spell it right, UDP. There we go. Um, so we see straight away that the malware, the first thing the malware did, uh, did was uh, perform a get request to this install dash start path of this particular C2, 08 super 5566.com. Uh, and we can see as well um, the, the, the rest of the packets here. If we wanted to, we could follow the stream. So we could just highlight that, uh, follow TCP stream, and we can see that we get a 200 response. So that's the malware checking into the C2 to say, hey, I'm here, I'm infected. And let's just go back to our previous filter, um, apply that one. And the next thing it does is it performs another get request to the same C2 to say, uh, and grabs mine.txt. And again, let's have a look at the, um, uh, let's follow the stream and we'll see what um, the response was from the server. We can see again, we got a 200 response from the server. And here's something super interesting. Here is the actual mining instructions that's being passed back to the malware to say, right, these are the instructions. Here's the, uh, here's the, the kind of username or the pool in which that you'll be mining from. Uh, and here's all the necessary um, flags that you'll need in order to perform that, uh, uh, the, the, the crypto mining. So that's cool. Uh, we've got that, uh, that element. Let's go back again to our previous uh, previous filter, uh, we can see uh, then the next, the following get request is to, is to ICANN has IP, which is simply gonna get my public IP address. And then we can see uh, it's uh, another get request with some weird parameters. We can see it pulls down a binary 64.exe, so that's interesting. And then we can see here that there's a report with some uh, system information. So let's have a look at this particular stream. And we can see here it's reporting um, my architecture, 64-bit CPU frequency, the number of CPU cores or CPUs, what memory information it has on me, etc., um, etc. Et so you know it's stuff which is very relevant uh, to 
the, the bad guys from a crypto mining perspective because they need to know what kind of system has been infected in order to know what kind of computational work that my system can perform for them and what benefit they can get out of uh, the, this system that's been infected. You can see the response here is um, uh, another path which is passed back to um, uh, the, the malware. Uh, and again, we'll go back and see what the uh, the next hop in the in the stream was if we apply our other filter. So we can see it's it's t it, the, the response was uh, a particular path and then, and then the following, the following uh, piece of network activity is actually a get request to that path. And then we see as well some more binaries being pulled down, which we can uh, use, we can stop our, we can stop uh, Wireshark and we can actually export those objects and see exactly what they are from a hash file hash perspective and, and do some reconnaissance from that side of things as well. But here's some key, real key network indicators. Uh, that you definitely want to block in your environment and make sure that um, you know you don't have any particular traffic to these and you're protected from if you if you're in a corporate enterprise from a proxy perspective you want to have these uh, blocked on your proxy if you're a home user then these are these are potentially um, you know um, indicators of compromise that you would look to actively protect in your environment and reroute elsewhere so you can see as well we got some more reports as well um, so as well as the the report up here we had um, to, to 08 um, super 5566 again we've got the same kind of get request so periodically it looks like this particular sample is checking in uh, with the uh, the malware authors to the c2 just with the information that's necessary to uh, to, to provide it for the crypto mining f function that the the malware is performing so real real, real interesting network indicators and we can also see as well uh, you know from uh, from a malware point of view um, it, We'll, we'll just give it a couple of minutes and we'll, we'll let Wireshark catch up with itself. We can actually export, here we go, export the objects to HTTP objects. And we can see here, um, you know, 64.exe and all, all of the packets associated with it. If we wanted to, we could dump that out. We could save it perhaps to the desktop. We can save that and we can flick through and see, uh, you know, what are the binaries uh, that uh, the malware is, has downloaded. We got 445.exe. Let's save that one. Uh, again, we'll put that one on the, on the desktop. If we wanted to have a look at this particular script here, 07 LUA, uh, again, these are really good indicators of compromise. We'll stick that on the desktop and we'll get the file hashes of those. I think that was the only one. Uh, we can also get mine.txt, but those, that was the uh, uh, the mining command as well. So it may, may be of interest to you, it may not be. So here we are, we got, I use, uh, I like to use hash my files. Uh, so let's just highlight all of these uh, and we can stick them in hash my files. We've got the MD5s and now you can use those indicators to update your antivirus to make sure that you are protected against those particular hashes as well as the hash of the uh, of the malware that we're interested in as well. So let's just have a look at a process point of view. Uh, finally, so in Process Hacker, we can see here we've got uh, what we saw in Procmon uh, with these uh, with these um, EXEs being created and, and ex executed, and we can have a look and see where in fact they live. So let's just have a look at the properties of this particular um, executable, and we can see here that it lives in C Windows Temp. Uh, and it's being executed with uh, particular commands and also that looks looks to be like some kind of log file being generated so let's go to that directory and see what's in there we'll go to uh, windows uh, and then we'll have a look for the temp folder where are we temp and we can see here that we've got a miners log file so you can see actually this is mining the monero um, cryptocurrency and here's all the logs associated with it which will be written to uh, and you can see that they're pretty pleased with themselves that uh, that, that uh, this malware has been successful is now starting to to mine crypto uh, mine, mine this cryptocurrency on behalf of the bad guys so that's interesting the executables there again this is another exe which you know you could stick in here get the hash for and make sure you're protected against in your environment uh, cool. Um, we've also got this uh, this executable MSI EXE, which um, is the one that's received. You can see the parameters in which that was been that has been executed, and we'll just maximize this a little bit. This is the same instructions that were downloaded that we saw in in Wireshark. Um, that uh, these are the same instructions that are given to the malware to say, right, this is the pool that you need to be part of in order to execute the the currency uh, that's been passed to this particular service. Uh, so that's super interesting. So again, more indicators and more um, kind of of stuff that you can look for if you think that you're impacted in your environment as well. So one thing, a uh, final thing I want to kind of show you, uh, if we have a look at the system information here, you can see that my, my CPU is 100%. It's absolutely smashing the CPU on the system by mining the, all of the currency. And that's one of the reasons why it doesn't want to let any other malware onto the system by closing that 445 uh, back door. It wants to shut that off so it can use 100% of my CPU um, in order to get the most, uh, most money uh, out of the whole situation as possible. Now, interestingly enough, um, what's built into this particular malware is a few detection mechanisms. So if I run Task Manager, for example, if I spell it properly for a start, 
if I run Task Manager, uh, you'll notice that the CPU usage starts to drop off. So I'm now down to 9% CPU usage. And what the bad guys have built in here is uh, a list of a few uh, regular kind of uh, executables or, or, or um, processes, which if you uh, experience some latency on your, on your machine, the first thing you might do is have a look at Task Manager to see what's actually running. So the malware will actually kill itself and try and hide from a general user. Uh, we're running Process Hacker, so we can still monitor it. And obviously the malware is not looking for Process Hacker being run in the background. And if I, in fact, actually close Task Manager, what we'll see is the service that's running the malware is designed to kind of respawn or reactivate every minute. So what we'll see is up to a maximum of a minute's time, we'll, see, we'll start to see the malware um, um, utilize the CPU and go right back up to 100% as well. So, I mean, you can see it now. It's starting to climb. We're about 40 odd percent and it's starting to dip and, and come back up, but it'll come back up within a minute, we'll see. So let's, let's just finally talk about how we can protect ourselves against this particular malware. Um, so firstly, definitely get patched against this uh, SMB vulnerability. You can also disable SMB v1, which is the vulnerable kind of version uh, of the protocol. Um, so de you know, read up on the Microsoft website if you haven't already, but keep up to date on your Windows patching, keep up to date on your antivirus and make sure that all the signatures are up to date and you've got a pretty good uh, chance then of, of being protected against the this kind of uh, this kind of malware operating on your system. You saw the kind of detection uh, levels it's got on Virus Total at the moment. So the majority of the antivirus vendors do have detection for this kind of malware and certainly this particular sample as well. So use a firewall if you're in a proxied environment. You definitely want to be using like a reputational uh, service, the kind of likes of uh, Blue Coat, to make sure that any uh, any traffic is investigated in line and, and can be blocked appropriately as well to stop any C2 callouts, which would then obviously stop any potential infection. And you can see as well now that. I've Close task manager just to wrap up um, that to my CPU usage is now back to 100% and, and actively mining back for the bad guys. So I hope that's useful. You've seen the, uh, the behavioral analysis. You've seen how to look at it from a process point of view. You've seen how you can look in process monitor for the key indicators of what it's doing with the firewall. Um, and also from how to grab the hashes and export the objects from Wireshark and the network activity. And also you've seen some of the mechanisms the malware is using to, to hide from regular users. So I hope that's useful and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.